people work in what you would think of as a traditional graffiti aesthetic and they can get paid for it and it doesn't have the sociological legal, pure, like almost stunt aspect of doing things illegally. When we say street art, it's more an aesthetic and a little bit of intent. And street art is more of kind of people maybe doing tr more traditional artistic themes, um, but just in a clandestine way on the streets. In 2015, graffiti artist Rob Larson began giving tours throughout Northeastern University and Roxbury to discuss graffiti art. I realized that just in the same area, there was a, a lot of really good street art and graffiti. Nothing on the tours are actually legal, which is not necessarily a choice either way for me. It's just that there's a lot of commissioned work in this area. But what about the illegal graffiti that's seen around Boston? Most graffiti tagging can be traced back to New York, to Taki 183 in terms of style. There was an article in the New York Times about Taki 183 uh, Taki 183 and his many imitators. And after that, the number of people tagging, just writing their name, exploded. And then people started to uh, innovate more stylistically. The graffiti busters have been cleaning Boston businesses and homes from graffiti vandalism for over 40 years. A lot of what we do here um, is just straight removal and paint and repair because a lot of the calls that we get are for some type of graffiti or vandalism. Some consider graffiti a nuisance, particularly on private property, and there's a high demand for removals, especially in Back Bay, Brighton, Alston, and Chinatown. We do on an average about 5,000 a year graffiti removals. That includes painting as well, yeah. From my experience, most people are very thankful that we've come to, you know, clean their home or clean their business or wow. kept the graffiti right. off of their buildings. Usually Great. most of them are always thankful and grateful and happy, which is nice. It's nice to hear. I've had to remove some that were very well painted. Some of them have been, you know, obviously looked like it took a little bit of time to do as well. But yes, yeah, sometimes, unfortunately, we have to take down some of the street art. If it wasn't permitted, if it wasn't allowed by the owner, you know, that's just, uh, it happens. The line between graffiti and vandalism is what's illegal and what is not. And that's also the difference between what gets cleaned off and what remains as public art. With the public art, everybody is going to see it. You know, so it's a much broader collection of people, and I think that's really important. And I think that art, it helps us to think about things in new ways. Boston graffiti artists do have sanctioned places to share their art without it crossing the line to graffiti vandalism. There are designated areas, you know, graffiti walls, designated graffiti walls that people can go and, you know, put their creative talent on. I paint often in Cambridge. There's the uh, graffiti alley, so I'd go out there, you know. Um, I was just there a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, I paint on a Sunday morning um, before it gets too crowded.